So today, I, I want to jump right into the message. And what I want us to do is I want us to have some time for worship at the end. Uh, this, is all, this is our second to last Sunday together before the new year. Can you believe it? And so I, I want us to spend time in just seeking after the Lord. And so I have a super simple message. Uh, it's a, and it should be super short. But we'll see what I can, if I can do that or not. <laughs> the Lord's really going to have to help me. Uh, but the, somebody say Christmas playlist. So the, the third song in our playlist uh, is a very short song in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Luke chapter 2, verse 14. And this is a song from an angel. An angel sings this. The Bible, it says this in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God. Some say glory to God. Glory to God. Now say it like you're an old time Pentecostal. Glory to God. There we go. Let's try that again. Some say glory to God. There we go. We're getting, some, getting somewhere now. Glory to God in, the, in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. I want you to underline that word pleased if you have your Bible. Just take a mental note and underline it in your head if you don't have a physical Bible with you. But I, I want to make a distinction today that there's a difference between loving someone and being pleased with someone. There's a disti distinction between loving someone and being pleased with someone. See, we know from the Bible, uh, believers know this, non-believers know this, and they, uh, believers quote this, and even non-believers quote this, that, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We know that. It's true. We need to, and, and if you don't know that today, it's important for you to get that into your spirit, that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. The Bible said, not height, height, nor depth, nor anything. Listen, there, there are principalities and powers. There's, there, there are things that would love to separate you from the, from the love of God. The enemy, the Satan himself, would love to get you to be separated from God's love. But God loves, God loves because he is love. But see, we have to understand, just because God loves you doesn't mean he's pleased with you. Just because God loves you and cares about you and died for you does not mean that you're living a life that's pleasing to the Lord. Can I get an amen from, from somebody for that? Like, like that's like, oh, wow, okay, thank you for this wonderful Christmas message. Make it, you, you mean to tell me God's not pleased with me today? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that it might be true that he's not pleased with you today. Just like he might not be pleased with me today. If, see, see, we have to understand that as a society, I think we've really focused in on God's love and we forgot that a part of the believer's walk is to, is to live a pleasing life to the Lord. To, to please the Lord. Too often people want the benefits of a relationship with God without the relationship with God. I'm preaching now. <laughs> it's like, come on, did you, do you realize I just shoveled out the driveway today? Like, take it easy on me. Come on. No, I'm not going to take it easy. I, I, I want to share what the Lord has given us to share. We have to understand that how we live our lives and the way, the way we live our lives makes a difference. And so I think the question we have to ask today is how do we please the Lord? How is it that the Lord's pleased with our lives? And, and I want to challenge us that, that, the, that the, pleasing the Lord is not a moving target. It's not an invisible target even. It's not something that we just go through life and stumble through life and, and hope that, man, I hope my life is pleasing to the Lord. No, the Bible lays out to us very specific ways in which we can live a life that is pleasing unto the Lord. And, and I think sometimes we don't think about it this way because may, uh, there's that pendulum that swings back and forth and, 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 and there's been a lot of hell, fire, and brimstone type preaching and then the pendulum swung over here to where we have a bunch of people that serve God that don't understand that part of our walk with God is to actually please Him. Amen. And so we have to ask ourselves, how is it that my life can please the Lord? How can I please God? 
And one thing I want you to understand, and, and I'm going to take my liberties on this because just in, in my walk with God, you, cannot, you can live a life that doesn't please the Lord, but that doesn't mean that God is disappointed in you. And I know that's hard, a hard concept to fathom because in, in our lives, if, if, if we, we can be disappointed in people pretty easy, but I don't believe God is disappointed in us. So we have to ask, how can we live a life that pleases the Lord? Just the other day, uh, we were helping my son clean his room. Five-year-old son, just out, you know, not an 18-year-old son or anything. <laughs> we're helping my five-year-old son clean his room. And as we were cleaning, guess what we found? We found food on the floor. Now that is not okay because mom has a rule that there should be no food in their rooms. <laughs> and we found food on the floor. And not just any kind of food, a banana. And not in the peeling, like outside of the peeling. Just laying on the floor. And then some crumbs and other things. And, and, and so we started to interrogate. Because just because, it was, just because it was his room doesn't mean it was his problem. Like it doesn't mean he was the one eating in his room. So we start getting our information, gathering our information, and, and, and interrogating the kids. <laughs> Fit, getting down to the bottom of it. And, uh, and, and, I, and I'll tell you what happened was amazing. My son very confidently took ownership. He says, I did it. I did it all. <laughs> and you want to know something? I was pleased with that. Why, why was I pleased with that? Because he upheld core values that we hold strong in our home. He had integrity. He had honesty. He took ownership, right? He, he didn't blame others. And so because of that, it brought as a father, I'm, I'm like, I am pleased with my, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. And he didn't get the discipline. And I explained to him, listen, because you were honest when you could have easily lied and, and created confusion, you owned up to it. And for that, uh, you know, you're still having to clean up your room and we made him pick up the mess, but you're not going to suffer the consequence that you would have. Somebody say, pleased. pleased. And see, he, why, why were we pleased? Because he, he, he upheld something that is important to us. And that's how we please the Lord. See, we please God when we uphold what's important to him. And so really quickly, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple things, just two things actually, that, that will please the Lord. If we uphold these things, if we uh, do these things, it will bring pleasure to the Lord. And the first one is obedience. Somebody say obedience. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 3, verse 19. Some of you might be like, that's in the Bible? Yes, it is. That's in the New Testament? Yes, it is. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when, this, when we stand before God. Verse 20. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. And he knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence. And we will receive from him whatever we ask because, listen, we obey him and do the things that please him. Isn't that a powerful passage of scripture? Why? Why? Because we obey him and we do the things that please him. Obedient, listen, obedience brings pleasure to the Lord. Like, think about it in the human perspective. If, if you have a child and you ask them to do something and they do it and they do it well, guess what's going to happen? There's pleasure in that. Why? Because there was obedience. And so I just want to encourage you, there's obe when we obey God, he is pleased with us. So when we obey his word, he's pleased with us. But also, listen, there, there's a rhema word. When God speaks to you, and I want to ask you this, when God speaks to you, do you obey what he says? See, when, when God speaks to us and we obey, that brings pleasure to the Lord. If in prayer, all of a sudden, God brings something up and, asks you, and, and speaks to your heart, you need to forgive somebody. Then guess what? I want to encourage you. Then you should forgive them. Be obedient. If God lays it on your heart that you should uh, buy somebody groceries or, or reach out to somebody, tell somebody about the Lord, whatever it might be, I want to encourage you and challenge you to be obedient to the Lord. Obey. See, obedience, uh, uh, the, the why behind obedience is that it brings pleasure to the Lord. 
And so the why behind a lot, of, a lot of the things that we as Christians are supposed to do, like why should we feed the hungry and, and, and the needy? Why should we clothe the orphans? Why should we help the addict? Why should we do uh, different ministry outreaches and things? Uh, well, number one, it helps the people that we're trying to help. <laughs> like that's a really good thing, showing, loving on them and helping them find their way to Christ. But the other side to that is it's, it's obedience. And by being obedient, it brings pleasure to the Lord. And what does the Bible say about when God finds people to, to please him? Peace comes. You see, I, what we find is a lot of people will seek after peace and seek after the things of God when really what we have to do is we, it, listen, if you're here today and you're wondering, if you lack peace in your life and you're wondering, and you try all kinds of different things to find peace, you try, you, you try Dr. Phil, you try uh, your doctor down the road, you try this, you try that, and no matter what you try, you can't find peace in your life. I'm going to tell you, it might be because you're looking in the wrong direction. Instead of trying to seek after a feeling and an emotion, start seeking after a way to bring pleasure to God. Can I get an amen? amen? See, that's the challenge. So many of us, we want what God can produce, but we don't actually go to the God who produces it. And so if we can learn, listen to me, if we can learn to go after the God that produces it, then what will happen is these, th th these things will be a byproduct in our lives. Somebody say obedience. obedience. All right, now, somebody say faith. faith. Tell you, this is going to be a short message, and we're going we're gonna, to... Go and worship together in just a moment. The Bible says this, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Somebody say faith. faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. He rewards those who sincerely seek him. Faith will cause you to pursue God. Faith will cause you to pursue pursuing God. And when we pursue God, it brings God pleasure. It pleases God when we pursue him. Somebody say pursue. pursue. See, we, faith will put this thing on the inside of our heart that, that we, we want to pursue God. But here's the thing. Also, if we start to pursue after God, what will end up happening is that will start producing faith in us as well. It, it will, it will it, it'll grow our faith. So the more we pursue God, the more we're going to experience greater levels of faith. But the more, and the more faith we experience, the more desire we're going to have in our heart to pursue God. And so the challenge today is man, we, get, we get so caught up and, and, and distracted and busy pursuing so many different things. I want to challenge us today. What, what I want us to do today is I want us to walk in faith this morning together and pursuing God. That's why I, the whole reason I kept my message short, I really could have just done this one point and kept it a five-minute message, but I, you guys shoveled and came a long ways, and so I'm going to make sure that we're going to give you a little bit more than just that. But I, I desperately want us to pursue God. Why? Because when we pursue God, we begin to experience his peace. When we begin to pursue God, we begin to experience his power. When we begin to pursue God, all of a sudden, you can experience... See, a lot of times people want to come to a service and think about God one time, raise their hands, and have someone lay hands on them, and then they have a Pentecostal moment and start praying in tongues. But I'm going to tell you that the way to experience God and receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit is through pursuing God. Seek me. Actually, the Bible says, diligently seek me, doesn't it? And so I, I believe that today what God needs from this church, from all Bible-believing churches, what God needs is some people that will, that, that will stop being so distracted and start pursuing after him like never before. See, that's the problem with church on Sunday. Is that we've that somehow, some way, church on Sunday became this check in the box that if we show up to church on Sunday, check, I did what I'm supposed to do. I'm pursuing God. No, listen, if what church on Sunday should be, it should be a challenge. Church on Sunday should be an encouragement. Church on Sunday should be to lift you up, edify you, per, uh, help you pursue the things of God, challenge you. Listen, my job is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. That's in my job description. Talk to the board about it when they brought me on. <laughs> that is their fault, but I, I'm living up to it. 
Listen, our job is to not just take a seat uh, in the church with our name on it and sit there Sunday after Sunday, whenever we feel like it, and then maybe some Sundays we don't feel like it and so we don't come. No, the, the goal is we have to recognize what church is about. Church is to glorify the Lord corporately. It's to worship God. It's to lift him up together as a body. It's to bring honor and focus on the Lord. And at the same time, it's God's, it's God's meeting place to challenge us, to equip us, to, to change us. To, to Listen, it's, it's a place that we can pursue after God together. Amen. There's a powerful thing that happens when God's people pursue God together. And so what we have to know is that man, faith, somebody say faith. faith. Faith pursues God. Some of you here today, in fact, there's one person, I know you're pursuing God because of the questions you have. Like they just have, I'm not going to pinpoint them because I didn't talk to them about this ahead of time, but they have awesome questions about the things of God. You know what? That is a sign that they're pursuing God. Here are a few other things that show us that uh, how do we pursue God? We pursue God in his word. Are we hungry for his word? I mean, I mean, not just doing like the, the you version, one thing, put it on the, you know, the, the, the audio in the background. You're not really listening to it, but you're doing it so you can check off your day. I missed a day the other day and I felt horrible because I read it in this and I didn't read it on that. So now I've messed up my whole streak on the Bible app. <laughs> But are we really pursuing God in his word? See, uh, the, when I know that I'm in God, you know what I like to do? I like to be, and I learned this from a pastor a long time ago, read until you get something. Read until something starts to change you. Read until God starts to speak to you. Study, read, read until all of a sudden you feel the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And, and all of a sudden the words just start jumping off at you. Listen, if that might be one verse. That might be t 10 chapters. My challenge to us is how about we start pursuing God in the word? Well, how long do I pursue the word until it comes alive for you that day? Why? Because we're pursuing God through the word. Prayer. Same thing. Man, now I lay me down to sleep. Like, or just, our Father who art in heaven. Uh, like, what does that, that's not prayer. Prayer is communion with God. Prayer is speaking to God. Prayer is, uh, so I would say, how long should I pray? Uh, pray until you know that you're heard. <laughs> and, and pray until you hear back from him. Prayer is a conversation. It's not just you speaking. It's also us listening. Pray. We need, I, I believe that we need to fall on our face and begin to seek after God. Pray after God. And not just the public prayer. I'm talking about in, the, in your prayer closet when nobody's looking. Uh, I, I am a big proponent of being prayed up for your day. Why? Because you know what your day looks like sometimes. You need to be prayed up for it. Prayer. Seeking. Are we, are we doing prayer as a duty to do a check mark? Th this is the real question, isn't it? Are we reading our word? Are we praying to check the box? Or are we reading our word and praying to seek after God, to pursue God? I want to challenge us. God wants us to pursue him today. God wants us to get a heart of pursuit. Here's another one, and just as important as the other two. Forsaking anything else that isn't him. You can, ima imagine when those who are married here Imagine, um, you know, imagine me as your pastor pursuing my wife but having a girlfriend on the side. Please don't imagine that too hard. That would be wrong. Uh, but imagine that. Like, uh, I'm going to, I want her to marry me and I'm, I'm looking to get engaged. And so I'm pursuing her, but I have these backup plans over here. That's not really pursuit, is it? But how many people do that in their walk with God? I'm pursuing you, Lord, but really... I've got this over here. I'm pursuing you, Lord. You know what that does? That causes almost like a, it, what it does is it causes a religiosity that the person is blind to. Like what happens is what's good in church and okay in church and go after things in church is okay on the platform, but in my own, per, and what's not okay on the platform, but in my personal life, it's fine. I can just do whatever I want. And what I want to challenge us with is this. Let's come to a place where we're willing to forsake all others. You might have heard that in your wedding vows or in a wedding vow. Forsake all others. Let's do that. Let's pursue God in a way that we're forsaking all others. This just got deep, didn't it? 
Let, let's forsake all others. Well, what, what all others? Anything that has your heart in the place that God should have. Any place that's taken a, a, time is another example of that, by the way. I'll tell you, time has people's heart more than God has. That's a big one. I could preach on that, a whole sermon series in and of itself. Listen, God, let, again, it's, let's not worship the things that God created. Let's worship the creator. Let, let's be careful not to worship those things that are created. See, I, I, I think you're getting what I'm saying, but I think, there's some, I think we've got to go a little deeper. What is in your life that you would never give up for God? That's the thing you might need to give up. Let's be willing to forsake all others and pursue after God. And worship team, if you'll come on up as a living illustration of this last point. Pursue God in worship. Pursue God in worship. And what I mean by worship is not just what we're about to do with the worship music, uh, but it has a part to play in the worship music. I, I don't think we understand that, like, worship is the way we live our lives. It's the, it's the day in and day out way we live our lives. But there's, just like prayer and just like reading your word, being intentional about times of worship are also important. And so I want us to have a time of worship, worship together uh, as a body. And it's in these times where we can, we encourage one another to pursue God. And so as I'm, as I'm worshiping God and seeking after God, I'm encouraging you to seek after God and pursue God. And so we need, I, I believe that one of the most powerful ways that we can pursue after God is through worship. And then what happens when we pursue God? Our faith is built. And so there's no reason that every single person in this room today has to leave without your faith being built up. Why? Because as, as we see, that, that's what worship is. The worship moment, the, 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 the lifting of the hands and the singing out loud, the, the yelling out loud, the clapping of our hands. What is all of that? All of that is, is a pursuit of God. Can I get an amen to that? And see, sometimes, again, let's not let worship be just that check in the box that we just do. But let it be something that we do intentionally to, as an act of pursuing after God. And so if you're here today and you're like, well, I, I don't feel like doing that. Listen, this is what my hope is, that faith would just invade your heart right now. And that faith will cause you to want to pursue, pursuing God. If you're here and all of a sudden like, you're feeling like, I can't wait to worship. I pray that, that that desire and that hunger to pursue God it catches like a flame. And, and you have even more desire to seek and pursue after God. Let's stand on our feet this morning. We're going we're gonna to pursue God together. We're going to pursue God together. And this is my, this is my, this is what I know that if we, if we pursue after God, and listen, this isn't just what you do. We're, we're doing, whatever we're doing corporately, you can take and apply it to your private world. That's, that's the goal is, okay, part of the corporate thing is to encourage us and empower us to do privately. So all over this room, not, not because it's a check in the box and it's not because that's what Pentecostals do. Like, like raise your hand. So Pentecostals raise their hands this way. Methodists do it this way. Presbyterians do it this way. Catholics do it this way. Like, it's not a check in the box or a, a routine. No, no. The Bible says lift up holy hands as unto the Lord. It, it, it's okay. It's, it, it's, it's, you know, a, a part of pursuing it is saying, okay, I surrender. You know, this is a universal sign of surrender. No matter where you are in the world, no matter what language they speak, if, if there's a situation, you point a gun, they're going to put there and say surrender. They don't, it doesn't matter if they understand the word. They're going to go like this. Why? Because hands raised is a sign of surrender. And so why don't we just all over this room. Now look, if you're new to church and this is your first time ever in here, like you don't have to participate in anything. But I do want you 
to observe at least and ask, man, is it, why would someone want to pursue, pursue God? Would pursuing God help me? Would pursuing God bring peace to my life? Would pursuing God really change some things? And my, my answer to that would be absolutely it would. So let's lift our hands. Everyone that's that not comfortable, even if you're uncomfortable doing it, do it anyway. But let's lift our hands and just worship God. By worship God, I don't mean sing the next song that's going to be sung. I mean, I mean worship Him. And now in your own words, I, I want you to just begin to thank the Lord. Just begin to thank Him. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that, that Lord, as we're about to enter into a new year, that you have great plans for me. I thank you, Lord, that you have great plans for everybody in this building. I thank you, Lord, that, that, that you have work yet to be done and that you're going to empower us and help us to do it. But we thank you, Father, that, that we are on your team and that you're on our team. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Begin to thank the Lord. Maybe you're thinking of your family right now. That's appropriate. Go ahead and, and just begin to thank the Lord. See, th this, this, bringing, thanking, this is pleasing, this is a pleasing aroma unto the Lord, the Bible says. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Father. And, and look, I keep your hands raised. Keep on worshiping. You know, all too often we do it for like just a second and then we're done and we want to go. That's why I made sure to get done super early. Because I want us to feel and experience what it is to spend a little bit more time in the presence of God worshiping Him. Praise you, Lord. Begin to lift your voices. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the uh, for, for this church. I thank you for the leadership of this church. I thank you, Lord, for the the volunteers, God, and the people that are that so sacrificially serve and give of their time, talent, and treasure. Lord, I thank you for people that are committed to the mission, to your mission, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Father coming down to this altar like Jamie and Dennis have just done. That's, that's a sign of worship. The Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. If you feel to come to this altar, this altar is open. I want to encourage you to come down to this altar uh, and, and pursue God that way. You know, it is biblical to raise our voice, lift our voices up and sing unto God. So as the worship team starts to sing and lead us in that part of worship, I, I want us to lift up our voices. Listen, it doesn't matter if you have a voice like Andy or any of the people on this platform or like me, you can still lift your voice. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let's go ahead and just sing G the name of Jesus right now all over this room because that's who we want to lift up. That's who our Lord is, Jesus. So if Tiana, if you just sing Jesus and lift your voices right now. I want to hear us sing. I want us to sing Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Let's lift up the Son. Let's lift up the Son of God. Let's, let's lift up Jesus in this place. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. your voices up everybody everyone just lift up your voices and shout that name sing that name and shout that name the name of Jesus hallelujah Sing in that language. Speak in that language. Lift up your voice in that language.
powerful way that we pursue God is also with our needs. And so sometimes, and I think that we've, we've get, gotten distracted by the pursuit of God and turned it into the thing that we're pursuing. But when we bring our needs before God, whether it be healing, deliverance, free, whatever it is, you can, there's nothing that you cannot pursue God in. That, it takes faith, number one, to do that. Secondarily to that, when we walk in faith and take a step in faith, it pleases the Lord. So maybe even today you're thinking, well, I haven't lived a life that pleases the Lord. And well, I'll tell you right now, you can pull up my son Anderson did. <laughs> they just simply say, I did it. All right, Lord. And you want to know something? That's pleasing to God. And so if you need a touch in your body, I want to invite you down to, to pursue God in your need. If you, if you need a physical healing, maybe, maybe you're dealing with some anxiety or depression. Maybe you're dealing with pressure and, and, and just attacks and things. Whatever it is, I want to challenge you but also encourage you. When you pursue God that way, that's showing God that you have faith to seek Him. And with faith, you please God. So this altar is open. If you need a touch in your body, I want you to come down to this altar and we'll pray for you. And, and let's just stay in this atmosphere of worship. Uh, again, and in pursuing after the Lord. So be the first person to come. That'll be that'll encourage other people that want to come to this altar. Because listen, God, God's here and God can heal. But we must believe that God is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, the Bible says. So let's seek Him in that. Yes. 
a supernatural God. That we serve a supernatural God and, and God never told us or, or put into our lives that we're to pursue him through religiosity, through, through structures and things. No, he, Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Therefore, we're to pursue him with our lives. He's a supernatural God. Listen, God, he heals. God delivers. God sets free. Listen, God, he, he, there, nothing is impossible for God. And I want, us, I want to make sure that we don't lose that reality in this church. There's plenty of churches that, that it's just a ritual. It's just a, listen, God, he's a supernatural, powerful God. He, he's, listen, I've, I've experienced the healing power of God on my life. I've experienced God touch me. I've, heard, I've experienced God restore me. I've experienced God give restoration. Have you experienced God do anything like that? Listen, God, God is a supernatural God. And he's also very personal. He's a very personal God. He cares about what you care about. Sometimes, there is a sense that God's mad at us, that he's disappointed in us. That he doesn't love us. And I think it's important as we go into the new year to be reminded that God loves you, that he cares about you. Even if he's not pleased with you right now, he's not disappointed in you. He's giving you an opportunity. So if you get Jesus loves me. I think this is a good way to end this service. and every head bowed I've got a question you're here today and you've been questioning in your heart maybe that, you know does God really love me if you're wondering where you stand with God I want you to lift your hand up nice and high if that's you today those hands. I see those hands. I see that hand. I see that hand as well. I want to read this scripture with every eye closed and head bowed, still just in the atmosphere of worship. Even when we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. God knows every thought, every decision, everything you've ever done, and yet, He's greater than your feelings. He's greater than your guilt. He's greater than wh whether you feel like God loves you today or not. God, God is greater than that, and He wants you to know that He loves you and that He cares about you. So in faith, why don't we sing this song with the worship team?
most in one thing, and this is the challenge. When we do live a life that's pleasing unto the Lord, somehow, some way, that sometimes comes in and causes some pride. Look what I'm doing. Look how, look. And that's why it's so important to be reminded this. Let us not boast in the fact that we love God, but in fact, how about we boast in the fact that He first loved us? See, that's not even, that, that, that's just declaring partially the nature of who God is. Not just simply what He's done. God, it, let us boast in that. Let, let's be, bo if we're going to boast in anything, let's not boast in, 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 in what we do. Let's boast in the fact that He first loved us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, that's, that's, the, that's New Testament right there, by the way. Boasting in what he's done for us. Boasting in the fact that, that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died. For, when he knew me at my very worst, he was at his very best. That's the good news.